I studied graphic design and typography long before I did anything with synthesizers. And before that, I was on stage. I was obsessed with synths, effects, sound. And then I realized that PCBs aren't just electronics. They can be art. And so I had to try it. And now I'm bringing graphic design to circuit boards. I call this circuit art. In this series of videos, I'll take you through the materials, tools, and production techniques of this amazing format and medium. So you could design your own faceplates and maybe even keychains. Because that's a thing. And actually, I'm working on something bigger. I'm starting a residency program and I'm planning to run workshops with artists, designers, illustrators who want to explore PCB design. This is still an early idea, but if you want to learn more, stick to the end or you can follow the links in the description. When you're designing for print, you think about materials. Glossy versus matte, rough versus smooth, uh, all sorts of textures. For example, this uh, Stanley Donwood little booklet uh, has these uh, this super nice texture um, that you can't really feel through video. Um, but all these are choices, right? This kind of recycled, old looking paper um, is going to feel different and it's also going to allow the ink to flow in a certain way in comparison to this Stefan Seckmeister signed this for me when I was a little student a little <laughs> I wasn't that little but um, yeah so this is matte paper right and matte paper feels different and uh, again ink flows uh, differently on it and yeah you get my point the stuff graphic designers can do with paper is really cool and my question is why don't we move to PCB design as well you see unlike paper PCB is a rigid material but it does have quite specific characteristics instead of ink and paper we're looking at copper solder mask fiberglass and silk screen Let's break it down. PCBs are made of multiple layers. Each serve a different purpose. Some functional, some visual. At the top there is solder mask, underneath there is copper, and then the base itself, that thing that holds everything together, is fiberglass material called FR4. On top of everything we can also print a silk screen, that's the white text. Every one of these layers affects the look and feel of the final design. Let's talk about solder mask. This is that green top layer that you see here. It protects the copper underneath and prevents unwanted electrical connections. But for designers, it's also an aesthetic choice. Usually you're probably familiar with these green boards, but this is also the same material. This is also a solder mask that is just simply black and not green. It can also be white, red, yellow, purple, and even transparent, semi-transparent. A black PCB looks slick and modern, a white PCB gives a minimalistic feel, bright colors can make a synth or an effect pedal really stand out. If you've seen any Make Noise or Mystic Circuits modules, their solder mask choice are a huge part of their identity. Transition. Underneath the solder mask, we have a copper layer. This is what electricity travels through, but think of it like ink in your design. You can see here these little traces that allows electricity to flow from one part to another. This is all underneath here. And these traces can be incredibly thin, like 0.16 millimeters. And they don't have to be purely functional. Some designers shape them into typography and all sorts of shapes. You can see here, this is a beautiful module by Instro. Jason is an amazing engineer and designer and musician. <laughs> so um, yeah, this, this is super impressive. Um, really minimalistic and, and super beautiful. 
This one, uh, Three Tom, also a remarkable engineer and also cool illustrator drawing all of this on his iPad. And this you can actually see is uh, copper. The copper layer is actually silver. So there's a bit of a difference in the final finish that you can add to your design. You can make it silvery like this, or you could have a gold finish like these right here. Beneath the copper, there is the FR4 layer. This is the actual core of the PCB, and let me show you. It's uh, semi-transparent. It's made of fiberglass and epoxy resin, which makes it durable and lightweight, and look pretty cool when you shine light through it. Now, this is only white light, and if you use RGB LEDs, you can get some pretty cool effects. If this blows your mind so far, go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps more designers find this video. And now, transition. Let's talk about silk screen, the silk screen layer, which I'm actually not using on this board at all. Silk screen is normally used in the traditional sense to indicate where uh, a component should be connected. I'm using it here on this board. Um, these are multi-purpose footprints, so it helps you understand a little bit how to connect components on the board. But you could also get an indication of the footprint number and then see the number corresponding here and connect it to here, which is going to connect it to the microcontroller. This is maybe too technical, but that's not the point. What you can also do with silk screen is just draw and print it as if it was paper. It also has a bit of a texture, which is which is super nice. And because it's white and this is copper, then it it's sort of like a highlight color, I guess. Now, all these layers that we talked about, they're actually two sides to the PCB. So you have twice the space to design whatever you like. And if you have twice the space, you might want to use one side for art and the other side for functionality. Like, for example, here in this board, what we did is we connected this header to these traces, and these traces are connected to these touchpads. So this is not only an artwork, but it's also functional. I can tap this to turn it on, turn it off, just like I did with Spotikatch right here. And this would basically connect to this board in the back, which is going to have the complete brain and controls and whatever. And that's the kind of stuff we'll be diving into in the coming workshops and residency program. I'm really trying to bring more artists, visual artists, illustrators, designers, um, animators to come to this community and design your own ideas. I teach product design and I know how many of my students are dabbling both with design and music, either DJs or music producers. And I hope to bring all this talent into this awesome, awesome community of engineers and creators in the music space. We can bring more of these ideas to the world and make exceptional instruments. And let's talk about holes and cutouts. These right here are purely functional, so you could actually connect components under them, right? Just like this. But this is a limited edition keychain that I released back in 2022 that's inspired by uh, the logo of the Simple platform. I don't know if you can see, oh, this is flipped, sorry. So you can see here the logo that's simple, and then you have all these pads, through all pads that you can add circuits to. Sort of like an expansion of whatever you're going to be doing here with a microcontroller on your components. Sometimes you need to add more. And the cool thing about this is you can see how I used silk screen in the center right here. And then these little holes, so on the S and on the P, these are actually connected to VCC and ground. 
So you can, they're actually functional and you can use them and patch into them, which is something I love doing. And this keychain was inspired by this. I want to show you another, another really cool design by making sound machines. These guys uh, made these blank panels. Blank panels, we use them on a Euro rack system. And you can just put them, they don't have any function other than just covering. The cool thing about this is that you can put Lego pieces under, which is such a beautiful way of using this. I mean, this is not functional in any way, but still, it's really cool when you have it in your system and you have this cute little thing there and your kids are asking you, the f is this dad? And then you make up a story that the whole system is relying on this little guy to work. Okay, so what we've covered is the material, right? This is our PCB and the PCB is made out of FR4 fiberglass board on top of it, there is a copper layer. On top of that, there is solder mask and then silk screen. And we can use both sides. And of course, this is just the beginning. We still need to cover the, the tools we can work with to make this happen and how to produce them. This is all going to happen in the next videos. Now I'm launching this residency program and I'm going to be running workshops with artists and designers and illustrators who want to explore PCB design as a creative medium. If that sounds like something that you're interested in and you might want to join, you want to hear more, sign up to the newsletter below. This is still an early stage phase. I want to see if you guys are interested in it. We are a non-profit organization and my time is very, very limited. So I'm making this video to get a sense if this is something that you guys want. And if you do, then we can make it happen. If you have any questions or you want me to cover certain things in the coming videos, drop a comment below, hit that like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.